Hello friends and welcome back to Sanctuary Gardens. I'm Jolene. If you're watching this video, there's a really good chance that you watched one of my previous videos that I did about a year and a half ago on pruning suckers on your, or runners on your strawberry plants to produce larger, more fruitful berries. And if you watch that video, you're probably noticing that my bed looks completely different from that video. Um, and for two good reasons. Uh, one, this is a lot earlier in the season. This is April versus the time in that video when I uh, recorded that it was August. August. So my berries are just coming out of dormancy. And then the second reason is that my berries are actually, my strawberries are ready for renovation. And that's what today's video is all about. A third reason is I also had a baby last year. And so I, I kind of neglected my strawberry plants. I didn't take as good care of them as I should. Uh, weeds have started growing in these and um, I knew I was gonna be getting out here to take care of it. So I didn't get to weeding this bed. So I'm gonna do that first. And then I'm gonna explain exactly how I'm gonna be renovating this. In this bed here, I have a uh, Albion, which is a day neutral variety. Previously, I thought it was an ever bearing variety and someone commented that they said it was a day neutral variety. So I looked into that and it does seem like this is a day neutral variety. Although when I got it from the nursery, I think they said it was ever bearing. And when I look online, sometimes they say Albion is ever bearing. So I'm a little confused as to what it is, but I believe it is a day neutral strawberry. Day neutral is a type of strawberry that produces small amounts of fruit all year long, which is what this plant does. So that's kind of why I'm thinking this is a day neutral variety. In the bed back there, I had um, Hood, which is a June bearing variety. We weren't very pleased with the, the Hood variety. So what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm actually gonna be tearing up this bed, taking all the runners that um, rooted in this bed and putting them in that one over there. And I'm gonna leave this bed be, I'm gonna weed it out and then fertilize it and try to leave these until next year. And then I'm gonna renovate this bed. Rather than doing two renovations in one year, which was a lot of work, um, I decided to kind of stagger them so that also when the time came that they needed renovation, they wouldn't hit the hit at the same time. So I could kind of stagger how often I have to renovate, if that makes sense. Now, if you watched my previous video on my one tip for really big strawberries, my one tip is to prune off the runners off your strawberry plants so that your strawberry plant would focus its energy on fruit production instead of reproduction, where they produce those runners to make more plants. I still recommend that, yet, there is a time to let your strawberry plants produce runners and let those runners um, take root in your bed. Strawberry plants are perennials. Um, commercial growers do treat them as annuals, but the home gardener can have the, the strawberry plants go from year to year, yet they do have a lifespan. So when you plant a strawberry plant, that's called the mother plant. And strawberry plants are always trying to find a way to reproduce. And so w one of those ways is by producing these runners that will then produce clone daughter plants. By pruning those off, you do focus the plant's energy on fruit production. Yet, after a while, that mother plant that you planted in the very beginning will get to the end of its lifespan, which is typically anywhere from three to five years. So at that point, when you reach that point, you'll usually know your plant's production will go down, the plants won't look as healthy. Um, and so at that point, it's time to replace that mother plant with a new plant. And some people would go out and buy all new plants. Yet, if you know that that time period is coming up where you're at the end of that lifespan of your mother plant, you can let the mother plant produce her runners and produce all these daughters and then replenish your bed with the daughter plants. So that's what I did last year was I let my strawberries completely let them go and their runners just went crazy and they, um, so the beds are a lot more filled in than they were before with all these daughter plants. Now. We do need to treat June bearing varieties different than day neutral and ever bearing varieties. And I'm mostly gonna be talking today about how to renovate an ever bearing strawberry bed. At some point in the future, I'll talk about how to renovate a, a June bearing strawberry bed, bed, but there are a lot more videos out there on renovating June bearing strawberries because that needs to be done yearly actually. Ever bearing strawberries and day neutral strawberries, on the other hand, um, can continue to go year after year for a while. And when they get to the end of their lifespan, then a renovation process is necessary. And so that's what I'm gonna be doing today. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to tell the difference between a mother plant and a daughter plant. This here is a mother plant. And number one, she's uh, a bit bigger than what a daughter plant would look like. But also when you come down here, this is the rhizome or the crown of the strawberry plant. And as you can see, it's there's quite like a, almost what you would call a stem coming up here like this. 
And um, this is an easy way to tell what the mother plant is. On the other hand, if we come right over here, and I got a weed I need to get out of here, this is a daughter plant. You can see how small she is, and um, when you go real close to the base here, there is not, her crown is still just beginning to emerge. Um, and so that is an easy way to tell that this is a daughter plant. Here's a really easy example as well. Um, here is, um, this is actually probably a one year mother plant because she's, she's getting pretty big, but you can see a runner coming across here and coming all the way over to, to here. And then this is the daughter plant. So this is another easy way to tell if you left your runners to go, to go and you just never prune them off, they will shrivel and dry up kind of like an umbilical cord. And then uh, this is an easy way to tell this is the daughter plant. So what I have here is a, uh, a couple wet paper towels in a plastic bag, because as I'm pulling up these uh, daughter plants, they're going to be sitting for a little while. And so I don't want them to dry out a whole lot. This is also a really good way that if you um, are gonna be pulling up all these daughter plants, and then it's gonna be maybe a day or two before you can get to actually planting them, then uh, put them in a wet, uh, wrap them in wet paper towels, put them in a bag and stick them in your fridge. Um, and they'll do just fine for, a, I would say, as little time as possible, but maybe a day or two. Um, but so I'm just doing this right now just to make sure that they don't dry out. Thankfully, strawberries have very shallow root systems, so it's very easy to uh, pull them up here without damaging too much of the roots. We're going to try our best not to damage them. That is a perfect example of a daughter strawberry plant. We have uh, several daughter plants going on right here. We have this one right here, this one here, which is a little bit bigger, and then this one right here. Here's one as well, but it's it's lost a couple leaves. I don't think this looks very healthy, so I'm just gonna leave that one there. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to very gently, I'm gonna come up away from the strawberry plant just a little bit by about like a, an inch or so, go down with my trowel and just dig it up like this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the dirt off of that strawberry plant with the roots there, just as gently as possible. We just wanna make sure that we're not disrupt, disturbing the roots too terribly much. Oh, hello, worm. And there we go. It's a beautiful example of a daughter plant. She looks healthy and she has a pretty good root system. These plants will go through transplant shock just like all other plants um, do. So we just gotta give them a lot of grace in the first few weeks. Some of these strawberry plants look pretty healthy and others don't look so healthy. So I'm gonna kind of pick and choose, um, but I definitely have enough to fill up a bed. One quick thing about bed preparation is make sure that your soil pH is somewhere um, slightly acidic. Strawberries can handle um, neutral to slightly acidic, but they prefer, I think it's like 5.8 to 6.4 soil pH. And if you wonder what your soil pH is, you can get home tests. Um, I think at like, and most nurseries would carry them and you just take, put a little soil in and some water in a capsule and then it'll tell you, it'll give you a gradient, uh, usually color gradient and you can figure out kind of where exactly it lies. Um, but if you want something more professional, there are, uh, you can send soil away to get a professional sampling of what your pH is. If you have a June bearing variety that you really like, leave a comment down below and let me know. All right, now it comes to the part of planting these strawberries that I saved from the other bed. Now, I just wanna say, um, I realize that not everyone has raised beds like I do or needs to completely fill up a bed. So if you are not needing to have to pull all your strawberries out to fill up a bed, you can still do this process, but maybe change it up a little bit, as in um, guiding your runners to a location where you would like them to you know, establish their root system, and you just kind of guide the runners, and then um, once they're fully established, you can get rid of the mother plant, and you can kind of renovate your bed that way. In fact, that's a process you could do every year if you want. I'm just showing you that I had to refill my bed because some people who um, have raised beds like us may notice that after a while the soil settles and then you get this um, big you know gap suddenly and so that's what we ended up having to do hi 
So there are two methods for how to plant your strawberries. And um, the one I'm gonna be using and showing you today is the hill or mound method. Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, and that's where you space your plants about 12 inches apart. And then for uh, the next couple years, I am gonna be pruning off all my runners. And so my um, plants, these are now gonna become my mother plants in this bed, are going to be uh, 12 inches apart. Uh, and I really, I like using this uh, cardboard triangle that is 12 inches on each side. And I put a strawberry plant on each end. And this is kind of a staggered uh, row system that allows all my plants to be exactly uh, 12 inches apart. He's probably getting dirt all over my neck. <laughs> He's so filthy. Uh, the other methods are the matter row system. And that is best for your June bearing varieties. And that's basically where you pretty much let the runners kind of go. Um, you space your plants two feet apart and you let the runners go and they kind of fill in. Um, and that's called the matter row system. But we're not, I'm not showing you that system today. I'm showing you the hill or the mound system. All right, so my son is going to, uh, you know, kind of jump in here in the video. So what I wanted to show, these are our, all the uh, daughter plants that I dug up from the other bed. And looking at these, these actually look really uh, pretty good. But one thing I wanted to mention is if any of your plants have uh, flowers on them, do snip those off. So I'm showing you here how I use my triangle to space all my plants evenly apart. Um, and as you can see, they're going to be staggered. Instead of having a strawberry plant right here, I staggered it in. And this actually can make it um, a lot more uh, intensive in your planting. So you can get a few more plants in. And then uh, this strawberry here becomes the, the next strawberry plant that guides me to where I go next. And I just lay them out like that. Now, you don't have to necessarily do this, but this works well for me. Something crucial you need to pay attention to is to not bury your strawberry plant too deep. Um, this is the crown of the plant right here. It's kind of that, that stem area um, before the leaves begin. You don't want to bury the strawberry all the way to the top, uh, the beginning of those leaves. You want to bury it basically just so that the roots are covered. Let me show you. So this is where I'm going to plant my strawberry plant. I'm just going to dig a hole here. I'm going to lay my plant in. There we go, just gonna press around it, make sure those roots have very adequate contact with the soil. Okay, I'm gonna bring it a little bit closer here so you can just see that. I didn't, focus, um, I did not bring the soil all the way up to here. I just left, I can probably cover just a little more there. What I'm gonna do next is I'm going to mulch this really well with some straw um, to help keep that moisture content really good and um, helps keep the strawberry roots cool in the heat of summer. There's a lot of good benefits to straw. So that's one of my favorites. I'm gonna uh, put some straw in here and then I'm gonna water it in well, and then we're all done. There we go. This is looking really good. If I just watered everything in, now, we're not going to be getting freezing temps. In fact, I think we might have had our last frost. So I'm not worried about um, cold weather for these. Um, but if you that is something you're worried about, maybe add a little extra straw on top of the plants too, if you know that there's going to be a freeze. So here we are. Here is the finished product. And I tell you what, this looks a whole lot better than it did before. Um, and I'm really excited to see how these plants do. Like I said, a few of them were kind of wilted over. So um, let's just cross our fingers and hope that they'll just perk right up as soon as they get this healthy soil and the water and everything that they need to, to grow well. The recommendation is to take off all of the blooms until July. And so anytime that you see a bloom, just pick that baby off. Once July hits, let them flower and enjoy the fruits of your labor. By taking off the blooms, um, you're just allowing these plants to just focus that energy into establishing a really healthy root system. Um, and I would also recommend take off any of the runners that they might try to produce um, as well throughout this year. So my goal is that this bed is gonna last us for the next three to five years, and then we're gonna probably have to repeat this process again. Another question that I get a lot is uh, fertilization for your strawberry plants. Um, from the research I've done, a balanced fertilizer, one that has the NPK numbers that are fairly close together, is probably a really good choice. And I'm going to be talking about fertilization later on in this summer. I am testing out a few products right now, and so I'm going to be giving a review on those later this summer. So be sure to subscribe to be, uh, check out that video later on. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. And we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Go out and grow something. God bless. Smile. No, just, just focus. <laughs>
just, just jump. <laughs>